Thank you. You can be seated. Thank you for standing. Thank you for praying with me. Um, just real quick, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna pre to preach for just a little bit. Not, I'm going to keep it past nine. But I, I just wanted to let you know that, that God... Nobody got that. It's like 97. Yeah. Okay. And so uh, let's, let's you know that God uh, has a way of doing things. And I, we went out today and we met with contractors and trying to settle some things up and trying to get some things done and, and trying to finish up the outside of that building so we could get it dried in so it would look like a church instead of a building with two ends, two ends knocked out of it. And, and we're trying to get some things done. And, and I just want to share with you that God has done some miraculous things in this in this thing that, that, that we've been a part of. Uh, I, I've told Doris three times today. I didn't pray for this. Remember, because we uh, what I preached this morning, this isn't what I prayed for. And, uh, and I, I prayed for a miracle, and God gave me this. And so um, I'm asking you to help me pray for that. But I'm going to preach today for just a little bit about I must needs go. That's the King James Version of I gotta go. Okay? John chapter 4, verse 4. Jesus is going to the woman at the well. And he says, I must needs go to Samaria. It's coming. I can feel it. I can feel it coming. I was about to be on the screen. I'm prophesying. John 4 and 4 will transform one of these screens. In the next five minutes. Okay, thank you. Right. Thank you, guys. He, he, he must needs go through Samaria or through Samaria. He's got to go do something through Samaria. So here we go again. So many times God has pronounced this to this body of believers. His will is to see us go forward with the call of Christ. I have been here most of my Life, I have been part of this church going on 50 years. This has been my home church, close to 50 years. And I've heard minister after minister after preacher after exhorter after somebody who really didn't have any business with a microphone get up and say, Thus saith the Lord, Thou shalt stand. Go forward and doeth greater than mightier things. Heard him say that over and over and over. This body of believers has been called since my entire lifetime to go do something that God has called us to do. We have simply not executed that and I've heard people say well it wasn't God's timing I think sometimes it was God's timing we just weren't ready yeah. Yeah. preacher on preacher yeah. I believe that at a time in the mid 80's when we had a move of God and there was you didn't come to church without 10 people getting saved yeah. that was typical yeah. you didn't come to church and, and we had a youth pastor named Sonny Carpenter and he would take us downtown and make us witness on the drag. That was scary, but we did it because Sonny told us to. Because we're more scared of him than we were of our friends. And God was pouring out his spirit upon this place like I'd never seen in my life. And we settled for what we had and we built a house instead of pitched a tent. Somebody say amen. Amen. But now we are standing here on the premises of God doing something amazing again. I believe that God is really looking for somebody in somebody's church and somebody's faith to rise to the point that I just believe that I can do whatever God has called me to do. There's nothing that I can't do through Christ who strengthens me. There's nothing that this church cannot accomplish if we do it together and not try to be the star of my show. Yeah. Yeah. To not only be a follower of Christ, but a servant of Christ. Yeah. There's so many times that it becomes so old hat or so cliche as to say, God has something special in store for you. No kidding, Pastor Obvious. God has something special for all of us because He's that kind of God. God is a special kind of God. God God looks into your life and he says the Bible says it this way that he looks into the heart 
the imaginations of, the, of your heart and sees what he has inside of you. And inside that imagination of your heart, he pulls out of you what God would have you to be. But so many times it scares us to see what God would have us to be. We back up and say, I can't do that. Help me, somebody. We back up and say, I can't do that because that's for the Baptists to do or that's for the Methodists to do. I'm just a little Pentecostal boy and I can't do that. Pasha, as I would as I would quote my English teacher, Mrs. Laura Rose. Pasha. You know what that means? Baloney. <laughs> It is so easy for us to back up and say, I'll just stay here. I'll build a little cabin here. It'll be fantastic. I'll dig a well. Everything will be great. I'll raise my children here. And God said, I never told you to stop there. I told you to rest there. Yeah. Right. Help me somebody. Yeah. Not only... Not only to be a follower of Christ, but to be a servant of Christ. Not only to have the look and the speech and the mannerisms of Christ, but have the relationship with Christ. Oh, I could preach you 12 sermons in a, in a, in a day about, about Christ, and I could give you all the Christianese you can stand. Oh, I'm going to be covered by the blood. That means nothing to a world who's lost. But to you... You understand what I just said. Yeah. But a world that's lost has no earthly idea what covered in the blood means. As a matter of fact, they're like, you're not putting any blood on me, freak, if that is your name. Okay, and so we have to sometimes look how we say some things. The only, the, listen, Jesus went to the lost. Those with nothing to lose. Jesus went to those who had messed their lives up and gave them hope. I've preached this in this church, I don't know how many times I've said it, but I'll say it again. Somebody lost in a cave does not need somebody telling them how stupid they are for being lost. They're looking for somebody with a flashlight and a map. Amen. Not a look of, I can't believe you're so stupid you got lost in the cave. Well, it was dark and I couldn't see where I was going. That's no excuse. You're so stupid. How could you be so dumb as to get lost? Because I didn't have a flashlight. I didn't have a map. Give me your flashlight and map. See how you do it. Come on, somebody. But Jesus went to the lost. Those with nothing to lose. He went to those who had messed their lives up so badly. They had given up, and God gave them hope. The woman came to the well. First thing Jesus said to her was what? Give me. All those preachers want is this and that. All they want is this. All they want is something from you. You got to step out. You got to step out. Give me. Not what can, what can I give you, but give me. Woman, give me the drink. I ain't giving you nothing. Why are you talking to me, Jew boy? I'm a Samaritan. You have no dealings with us. Why are you even talking to me? Don't talk to me. You have no business talking to me. We make it act like, we make it, when we read the story, since we know who Jesus is, we act like, she's like, oh, Heavenly Father, how will be thy name? She had no idea who Jesus was. He's just some Jew guy asking her for a drink. I ain't giving you a drink. You ain't letting your lips touch my water? You ain't getting nothing from me. But Jesus said this. He said, listen, he, he didn't need her water or her pot to draw water from. She, he needed her to obey him. He, he needed to see her heart. Are you willing? Are you willing? I know we don't have any communication with each other. And I know you don't even like me. Your family don't like my family. Y'all Samaritans, we're Jewish. I don't like you. But what was her heart? Her heart was simple. Her heart was simply to give, to, to, be, to be ready to serve. He needed to see if she was ready to be changed. 
Can I share with you, I, I believe that there's a city out there ready to be changed. Amen. God would not be getting us ready to change if it, there was not a city ready to change. I, I believe there's people out there right now who wish to God they knew what to do. Yes. Come on. I know you got it all together, but not everybody out there does. I know you got all the answers, but not everybody out there does. I know you got everything, all your ducks in a row. I got it. But not everybody does. And they need somebody to help them. Jesus had got out of his way to come to her. I must needs go to Samaria. So, uh, but Jesus, we've got meetings over here. I don't care what we got over here. I got to go to, through Samaria. But Jesus had gone out of her and out of his way. Now he needed to see if she would come to him. See, I, I just get a little antsy when people want God to do everything and not, they don't even want to do anything. Well, now, brother pastor, I am saved by grace and not by works that any man should boast. True. True. Very true. You are saved by grace. Am I by faith in Jesus Christ? I'm saved. I got it. And not, the, not, not, my, my, not by my work, so nobody can boast and say, look what I did, and so I got saved because of what I did. I understand that. I get it. I'm, this is my first day to read the Bible. I got it. But hear me just a second. But there comes a time when you will do things because you want to, right. not because you have to. Right. There comes a time when you'll come to Christ because you want to, not because some slick-haired, shiny shoe preacher tricked you into it. Come on, somebody. There's a time when you have had enough of the what of the water you've been drawing, and you want some water that won't make you thirsty. You, there's, there's a, there comes a time when you finally get it. Oh, I need something greater than me. So he needed to see if she would come to him. The scriptures say that Jesus was sitting on the well, almost waiting for her. Hang on now. She didn't even know she needed anything. Yeah. She sure didn't need nothing from some Jew. Right. Uh -huh. Come on. Come on, come on. And here's Jesus. I've been sitting here watching the wheels going around. It's all to A little John Lennon for you. Sorry. I really love to watch him roll. He's just hanging out. Wait for this lady to show up? The disciples go, what is this cat doing? Doesn't he know we have stuff to do? We got places to be. We got people waiting on us. They got big offers in the city up there. And Jesus is hanging out at the well. Who 
prayed for rapture, but we ended up seeing Jesus and they fell asleep. Yeah, right. But can I share with you that God saw deep into the future and when he said he planted a church in the 50s that needed to reach a community in the 2020s. And he said, here's the deal. I'm going to build it right here for the meeting. For the meeting. I got to go. I got to go. Oh, and that's just preacher speak. Do with it what you will. Take what you need. Leave what you don't want. But I'm here to tell you, it's not by chance that an old Indian schoolhouse was moved to these two lots, four lots, whatever, two lots. It wasn't by chance. There was a board meeting of the Pentecostal Church of God in 1951 to decide to buy this corner lot. It wasn't by chance that Harry Ford came and said, I want to build a new building. Let me tear it down. They said, you can't tear that down because there's a gully that goes underneath it. Okay, we're going to remodel it, put the blocks around it, tear it out, carry it out the door. Uh, yeah. Wasn't by chance. Yeah. He told me that his own self. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> they remodeled. It wasn't by chance that I came to Oklahoma in 1969 from Madera, California. It wasn't by chance that my dad got mad one day and said, we're moving. Got mad at work. And my mom said, you're a lie. I ain't moving. But God had told her two weeks before, get ready because you're moving. And she said, I ain't moving. I rebuke you, devil, in the name of Jesus. You have to understand, my mother and dad had a dairy farm in Madera, California. A brand new home that no one ever had lived in but her. And she moved to Seminole, Oklahoma, to never had anything really of financial blessing. Hmm. But it wasn't by chance. God knew that, I, that listen... This is, I don't want this to sound cocky or anything like that. But God knew that he needed me here in 2019 and 20. God, God knew that, that he was preparing a, a well, if you will, for a chance encounter for me and, and for Jesus to me. God knew that he was preparing a place that was preordained before I ever got here and I was ever thought of. And he built a place that I could call my church and my home and my church family that we could go reach a community because I don't know about you, but I must need to go. I've got to go do something for Christ. And before I pass on my way of the grave or rapture, i got to have put a mark somewhere that, listen, that Jesus Christ is Christ. He is the anointed one in his anointing. He is God. He is not just simply a, a name in history, but he is the, he wrote history. I've I got, got to tell somebody about Jesus. God had planned the meeting before the woman had ever been born. Before she'd ever had her first husband. God had planned a meeting. Now was the time. Now the time was right. Jesus said, "I must need to go through Samaria. I gotta go make something right that's been messed up for a long time." The time was now right for an encounter with Jesus. Listen, I don't know if you understand this or maybe that you don't get this, but there are times that God sets up for you. You didn't get saved just because you wanted to. God set you up. The Holy Ghost began to deal with you. When you didn't know what the Holy Ghost was, you thought you had bad pizza or something. But God, God began to deal with you. You couldn't sleep. You were angry, upset. Crouchy, crotchety, whatever you want to say. Couldn't eat. You thought you were either in love or something. But God began to deal with you through the Holy Ghost. Now that didn't happen to me. I bet it did. You just didn't know. You just didn't know what was going on. And then you came. Because what made you come to church? We weren't selling liquor here. There wasn't beer all over the dance floor and the band wasn't
want to play rhythm and blues? There was something that drew you for a meeting. There was something greater than you that drew you to a place you didn't really even want to go. If I go to church, I'll be like, hey, good to see you. <laughs> hey, where you been? I don't really want to deal with that. I know I'm the only one. I don't want to have to turn my car off and walk in the building. Because everybody be looking out the window. Is that Jeff? <laughs> I'm the only one. It's so good to see you, Brother Jeff. I'm so glad you're here. Okay, I'm glad to be here. Leave me alone. I understand why we do this because we love people and we want them to know they were, that we love them. Hey, right, thank you for being here. I get it. And please, I'm not saying not to do that. I'm saying not to look out the door at it. <laughs> don't do that. Please don't do that. Please don't do this. Whose car is that? <laughs> Please don't do that. Expect somebody to come in you don't know. Come on, somebody. Okay. Don't don't be looking. I don't know them. They came to the house. I don't know them. <laughs> now is that one of your cousins? <laughs> but don't do that. And when they come in, just welcome in the house of the Lord. Amen. Let them know that you love them and that you care about them. Hey, good to see you, man. High five them. Thank you for being here. Now, where have you been? I haven't seen you in a month of Sundays. It's actually been eight years, but thanks. Okay, wait a minute. Let's go on. Let's go on. Let's go on. Let's go on. But there was a well dug for an encounter. For an encounter. The time was right for an encounter with God because you don't just get to pick and choose. The Spirit draws you. No one else was there. The disciples had gone away to buy meat and it was only Jesus and the woman. That's dangerous. It's only Jesus and the woman. It's dangerous to get along with God because something in your life will change. Come on now. No one else to hide behind, only you and Jesus. You can't hide behind the preacher. You can't hide behind the worship. You can't hide behind anybody else. Oh, it's just you and Jesus, baby. Amen. You, Jesus, in a well. That's a dangerous place to be. <laughs> no one else to stand with you. No one else to give you to him. It's just you and him. Yeah. Right. You got to figure it out, guys. Listen. At some point, we're going to have to suck it up, man up, and woman up, yeah. and stand in front of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. He was set, listen, he had set this encounter up long before she had ever been born. God himself was setting up this encounter. God had set this well up and this encounter up. Although this, listen, although this may not be a physical well, it is a well. This place is not a well of drawing water, but it is a well to come meet Jesus at. Amen. And I just want to ask you a question. We forgot to pray for Molly. We'll pray for her when we remind her. If you have faced it of that well, you and young, us and us and us if we have tasted of this well, of this water that we will never thirst again, yeah. and I see people that are dying of thirst, yeah. right. Come on. and I keep my water a secret, yeah. something's wrong in 
inside of me. Something's broken inside of me. It'd be like having a cure for cancer and not telling anybody because you don't want anybody to look at you weird. He says he can cure cancer. I can't cure cancer, but God can. I can't cure a sin sick soul, but God can. I can't do anything for you, but God can. God can wash you white and clean you white, and God can make a dirty sinner walk into this building one way and walk out of here another way. God is well able, but we must needs go. I cannot tell you any more or any greater how we must needs get off our tail and go. It is time to go. Although this may not be a physical well, it is a well. Though there may not be water in here, there is living water in here. Woo! A well of life that it will spring up out of you. There's, listen, I don't know if you've ever noticed, uh, but I'm not real reserved. Thank you, Lord. I'm not. I try to be really good. I really try, but my ADHD kicks in, and then I can't stand behind here and, and bore you with something I didn't even care about. Yeah. Now, if you will, turn your Bible to John 4 and 4. He must needs go through Samaria. I would leave. <laughs> if you're not any more excited about God than that, yeah. you don't know who God is. Right. If you're not any more excited about your walk with God than that, yeah. you don't have a walk with God. Amen. If you don't love God more than that, Come you on. don't even know who God is. Don't Amen. talk to me. I, got, I ain't listening to that nonsense mess. I ain't. Well, you need to be proper and you need to be clearly and you need to enunciate first of all I don't enunciate well <laughs> true to yes. and us as kids folks. Um, I don't enunciate real well sometimes because my words get all jumbled together and my wife's like what did you say and so um, but, but if you don't have a passion for God, I I can't help but have a passion for God. I, I I don't get bored with God. God is not boring. Some of church is boring, but God is not boring. Some of God's people are boring, but God is not boring. I have issues with people who think that God is just a list of rules of what I can and cannot do, and they have no clue as to really who he is, and they have no passion for him because I don't, I, they don't know him. You have, I know him, man. I call him Jesus. He calls me Jeff. It's really cool. I know him. He doesn't say, hey, you. Hey, guy. What's up? Hey, uh, you. What's up? No, 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 no. He wakes me up and says, Jeff, get up. Oh, what was <laughs> It's 4.15. What do you want? Uh, 4.15. What? God, speak to me in a dream, Father. Leave me alone. John 7.38. John 7.38. Very familiar passage of Scripture. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. 
Some of y'all got dust in your belly button. You ain't had no lemon water come out of there in a while. You got a lint factory down there. They had no water bursting out in a while. You've forgotten what it's like to have the joy of the Lord to be your strength. You've forgotten what it's like to have rivers, rivers, rivers of living water flow out of you. You've forgotten to have passion for God. You, you, you know God, you love God, but passion, oh, you know, you're a little too loud for me. I'm tough! I'm going to be louder than this. I'm going to be louder than this. I yelled louder than this probably at some stupid basketball thing yesterday. I don't know, I was pretty good. That's pretty good. Because it didn't matter. It's a scrimmage. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus knew every intimate detail of her life. Yes, he did. He knew everything. Yes. Anybody remember that old song? Indescribable. Unobtainable. You know the something of my heart and you love me the same? What is it? Depths of my heart, and you love me the same. You are amazing, God. You're indescribable. I wish I could tell you how good He is, but I can't. I wish I could tell you how much I love Him, but I can't. I wish I could tell you how much I I, I just love being in His presence, but I can't. I wish I could make you excited as I am, but I can't. But he's indescribable. Unattainable. Oh! Come on. Come on. Hey, I'll let go. Why is it 100 degrees in here? Amen. <laughs> okay. Our new church is going to be 65. Bring a sweater. <laughs> I don't know if that's real or not. Bring a parka. I'm dying. I'm dying. And for what? A bunch of cows. Okay, listen, listen, listen. He knew. He knew where he had seen, what he had seen, she had seen. Listen, he knew who she was with now. And he knew what she had done in her past. He knew where her heart was right now. It's not just her. He knows you. Amen. He knows your heart. He sees the depths of your heart and he loves you the same. Because you are amazing, God. He's amazing. He absolutely... <clears throat> I guess I love him so much because I realize how much he did for me. Thank you, Jesus. Breathe on him, Holy Ghost. <laughs> I, I want you to understand from whom much has been forgiven, <coughs> much is appreciated. Yeah? I know where I came from. I'm not... I've never sinned. These eyes have never appeared, uh, appeared upon anything unholy. These lips have never said anything unclean. This gullet has never swallowed anything wrong. <laughs> I am the pastor. <laughs> Why, folks, please? Please. <laughs> and stay. <laughs> yes. Listen. Listen. I have seen. I have tasted. I have said. I have gone. I have done. Things. Things. That God would frown upon. But he sees the depths of my heart and he loves me the same. He's an amazing man. I'm about to quit. I'm about to quit. 
He knew where she had been. He, she knew, he knew who she, who she was with now and what she had done. He knew her past, her present, and her future. He knew all of it about her and loved her anyway. Jesus went as far as he could go for you. Calvary was the stopping point. That's as far as I can go. All I can do is pour out my blood for you. All I can do is give you my life, eternal life, for your temporal life. That's all I can do for you. He gave you everything. Jesus went to death and back to wait for you. Think about this. I want you to think about this. Please listen to me. Look up. Give me ten minutes. Look up at me. Brother Daryl. I love you, Brother Daryl. Thank you for being with me. I thank you for being a part of our church. Love you. Yes. Love you. Yes. Listen. Brother Daryl, when I came to Jesus, I didn't wait for him. Oh, come on now. You with me? Come on. When I came to Jesus in that one bedroom house on the north end of Highland Street, and I actually gave my life to the Lord and I just played around with it. But actually gave my life to the Lord. I didn't have to say, I've been sitting here watching the wheels go round and round. I didn't have to whistle patience. Because when I got there, he had been waiting on me the entire time, brother. You hear me? When I got there, he said, where you been? It's so good to see you. Was that your car? He, he was so excited to be, to, he was so excited to be with me, he beat me to the place. Can you hear me? He beat me to the place he'd already predestined for me to meet him. Amen. Uh, Jesus. Heaven, we got to stop for a minute because I must need to go to Highland Street. And he beat me to the spot that he preordained for me to meet him. Yeah. He was there long before I ever showed up. Right. Well, how do you know that, brother? Now, brother pastor, let me just ask you a question. Do you think God stopped the entire world for you? Yeah. No, but he stopped the entire, my entire world for me, and he stopped everything else for me, and he did everything else he could for me. He died for me to be with me. He, he died, he loved me so much that he died just to be with me, and he, he cared so much, he poured out his blood for me, and he loved me so very much that he not only did all that, but he met me before I ever got to the place. He was there, but so could I, when I got out, he was already saying, what? Come on, somebody. That ought to make you want to dance. And yes, a song's going through my head. Sorry. <laughs> that ought to make you want to shout a little bit. Yeah. Turn to your neighbor and say, I feel good. Yeah. Turn to your neighbor and say, like I knew I would. Yeah. Ba -da 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 -da. <laughs> Amen. The James Brown for you. It's eclectic in my head, sorry. You never know what you're going to get. Jesus said I must need to go. Church, we've been told for 70 years to go. Go make disciples. Go do, go, 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 go. I don't want to be that guy that gets so comfortable. See, you see an unfinished building when you drive by. 
I see a church full and, a, and another building project being, that's what I see. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I'm already planning ahead for the next building project. I can't. I haven't even gotten this one paid for yet. Amen. Amen. Yes. But God's got money. Yes. I didn't got this one done. But I'm already. I'm already two steps into the other. And that's stupid, crazy, but that's just how it is. But I don't plan on building one building and say, "Oh, get enough! All right, we're right here. Hey, we're done." No. no. 17,000 square feet that near big enough. It wasn't big enough when we bought it, but I had to get it because it's cheap. Yep. And God gave us 32 acres to build on. Yeah. yeah. So we, and, and, and we bought it for about five grand after my sister sold the other property. So I don't know if you know that. That's a miracle. That's not what I prayed for. I prayed for a new church. I've got a barn out there. It's not even done yet. It's getting there. Amen. I see a church full of people and another building project right beside. That's what I see when I go out there. I don't. I. I don't see incomplete. I see full. Hear me. We're about to embark on something that I've never embarked on either. Do you, do you, do you understand the mentality has to change? From little bitty church to yeah. can't go. Got to switch it off here. Little bitty church to global evangelism. Right. 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 Starting yep. with your own house. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Woe unto you, fathers. You want to win the world, but your children are lost. Woe unto you, preacher. To preach salvation to the masses and won't live it at home to your house. Woe unto us. It's better that a millstone be hung around our neck and thrown into the sea than offend one of these little ones. Start with the ones at your house. Preach on, preach on, preach on. God has called us to great and mighty. My question is, you're going to be a little bitty, you're going to be great and mighty. I, I, I can't be that guy. I'm not that little bitty guy. God's called us to greater. He's already there. Do you, you realize that? He's already there waiting for us to get there. He's already paved the way. He's already cleaned, cleared the, cleared the land. He, he's, he's already, he's Lewis and Clark did already. He's already mapped it out. He went across the Continental Divide. You know what the Continental Divide is? Anybody know what that is? That's where the water starts running toward the Pacific Ocean instead of the Atlantic Ocean. He's already gone across there. He knows exactly where the pitfalls are. He knows exactly when we're going to get there. He just said, I must need to go. Yeah. <laughs> That's good preaching for a quiet guy. Yes, I'd go to this church if I didn't pastor. <laughs> Crazy, man. He's your preaching stuff. 